Hey, I'm Toby and welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be the third episode in my Reading Around the World series and I'll link the first two videos in the description box below. So far I've talked about books that I've read from the US, Argentina, South Korea, Afghanistan, Norway, Vietnam, Nigeria and Cyprus. In today's video I'll be talking about books from Denmark, Senegal, Czech Republic and New Zealand and and let's just get straight into it. The first book I want to talk about is The Employees, a workplace novel of the 22nd century and it's by Olga Raven and it's translated from the Danish into English by Martin Aitken. I literally just finished this book and oh I loved it, loved it, loved it. I just wanted an excuse to talk about it to be honest. So this book is set in the 22nd century in the near distant future. It's set on a ship which is millions of kilometers away from the earth and this crew of the ship is made up of humans but also humanoids. The humanoids were developed using AI to look like humans, act like humans, think like humans but be way more productive, efficient and better employees. This is such an odd but intelligent little novel. It's a philosophical, soft sci-fi, dystopian narrative and it is just a wonderful, wonderful reflection of modern workplace culture and also capitalism's chokehold on our society today. And I really, really appreciated how rather highlighted the extent that productivity and being a good worker, like how intertwined that is with people's core being and existence and their value and their self-worth. And I particularly enjoyed how she explored the relationship between employees and employers and how often they can feel like employees can have this superiority complex to their employees and how they can often perceive their employees almost as very little more than machines and I love how with this novel because it's structured with HR witness statements sometimes you're not sure whether it's a human or humanoid talking because they can end up coming across both as just these machines these vessels of productivity in the eyes of their employers and i love how that was shown in this novel it just really shows that if someone's worth or value is measured by their productivity by their efficiency how dehumanizing that actually can be i really really appreciated the experimental form of this novel the way that it's structured just with these hr witness statements and some of these statements are one line some of them are are two and a half pages. There's so much intrigue and you're not entirely sure what's going on. I understand that the fragmentary and non-linear structure of this novel it's not going to appeal to everyone. It's not going to be everyone's cup of tea but I really really loved that. I thought it added to the intrigue. I won't lie right 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 at the beginning I was a bit like where is this going? It's a little bit confusing but once you just kind of like let go of the idea of needing to be in control of where the direction that the narrative is going in then you just go with the flow and things start to unravel and you start to get a peek into the bigger picture into why the board of directors are interviewing these employees both humans and humanoids you start seeing the divide between humans and humanoids you start understanding what it means to actually live a fulfilling life. I just love that this is just a very concise and smart critique of what it means to live a life that is governed by work, governed by productivity and governed by capitalism which unfortunately is the life that we all live. So we are going to go from Denmark down to Africa, West Africa and Senegal. So the book I want to talk about from Senegal is At Night All Blood is Black and it's by David Diop and it's translated from the French into English by Anna Moscovakis. This book was actually the winner of the 2021 won International Booker Prize. I'm not someone who really follows book prizes but the International Booker Prize is probably the only one that I do like to pay interest to. So this book is set in First World War, the Great War and we're following Alpha who is the Senegalese soldier and him and his best friend Mademba they go to fight on behalf of France. However Alpha's best friend Mademba ends up getting gravely injured, is on the brink of dying and he begs Alpha to kill him to put him out of his misery and the excruciating pain that he currently is in 
Alpha can't bring himself to kill his best friend despite it being a mercy killing. And Alpha doesn't and has to watch his best friend die this agonizing and long death. And we see the consequence of him making that choice. And I love how this book really shows how one choice you make in life can completely derail the rest of your life. So that decision ends up haunting Alpha and he ends up wanting to get vengeance on behalf of his best friend. And he essentially reenacts the killing of his best friend to the soldiers on the opposition side and that involves bringing back one of their hands as almost a trophy for the kill. Initially his other comrades they're like well hey, hey you go alpha but then when he brings back like the third or fourth hand they're like oh oh this is weird this is gross they start seeing him as this very demonic almost evil being and they're like I'm gonna keep my distance from you because something's not all right up here. And we just end up seeing the extent that Alpha goes to try and make amends to his best friend that is now dead. While Diop's writing, the prose in this is lyrical. It is enchanting. It almost reads as poetry at times. There is certain phrases, the repetition of which just added to that poetic nature of the novel. And I love how that beautiful prose juxtaposed the violence, the bloodshed, the hypermasculinity within this novel. It's such a visceral exploration of humanity or rather the lack of within the context of war. And it does not glamorise war in the slightest. And I also like how Diop explored not only the problematic nature of war and warfare, but he also highlighted colonialism and the savagery and the bruteness that was expected and actually demanded from the Black African soldiers. And although, yes, there are so many things that I could praise about this book. I do wish though that I felt more connected to the protagonist, to Alpha, and I wish I was more invested in the friendship between him and Mademba because that is the core part of this novel, that friendship, that's what sparks all the events that happen. But I did really appreciate the non-linear structure within this novel and I really, really loved especially the parts when we get to be in Senegal during Alpha and Mademba's childhood. And then also the ending in this book, it was such an unsettling, quite ambiguous ending. It felt almost surreal near the end, kind of fever dream-like and the intensity that built up in that ending, I really loved and it kind of sort of saved the book for me because I was starting to feel slightly mid during the middle but that ending really brought that book back up for me and I really then I enjoyed it. If you love lyrical prose, you love a historical setting, you love books which examines warfare, colonialism, some social commentary, then you might appreciate this book. Now we're gonna go from West Africa all the way to New Zealand. This is a book that I have not really seen um, anyone on booktube talk about and that is Sentence of Marriage, Promises to Keep. And this is a series by Shane Parkinson. And you might be thinking, what an ugly cover and Honestly, that, it is what it is. But the reason I picked up this book was because when I first ever got my Kindle, which is probably like a decade ago, like 10 years ago, this was one of the like very few free books that they had on Kindle. And <laughs> my broke self was like, thank you, I'll have that one. And then I ended up falling in love with the story, but with the characters in particular. Parkinson knows how to create these 3D, real, flawed, but lovable, some of them, mm, they're not lovable, very hateful characters, but either way, the characters evoke such strong emotions from you, whether it's you want to protect them and just hold them close to you, or you want to push them off a cliff. Yes, Susanna, we're talking about you. <laughs> And actually, I checked and it's still a free book on Kindle. So if it ends up sounding like something you'd enjoy, then I pick it up. You've got nothing to lose. So it's set in 19th century New Zealand. And we're following this farm girl called Amy. I think she's like 14, 15, 
oh, I lied, she's 12 when we first meet her. And it's essentially this like historical family saga, but it's not one of those generational family narratives where you're following different characters throughout the years. No, Amy remains as our protagonist throughout all the books. And I really loved how Parkinson painted this very engaging, but historically accurate portrait of colonial New Zealand. We are mainly following Amy, and we see how she dreams of bigger and better things. She wants to escape this small town that she lives in. Plot wise, it's quite predictable. You can tell what's gonna happen, but because of certain events that transpire, Amy really has to learn how to deal with the consequences of making the wrong decisions at quite an early age. And then we see how her life plays out from that, especially in the context and landscape of 19th century New Zealand, where women you get pulled out of education at a young age so you can learn how to look after a house and be a good wife and mother we really get an exploration of religious dogma at that time of hypocrisy of the importance of saving face when you live in this small town where everyone is involved in everybody's business and i love how not only is the protagonist amy's character so well fleshed out all the other characters from her immediate family to her best friend and cousin Lizzie to Lizzie's family to different love interests to just the other townspeople and I just think Parkinson her way of fleshing out characters of creating them building them bringing them to life is honestly superb like to this day 10 years later I think about these characters I've read this series multiple times as a teenager I just loved coming back to it as this comfort read because the characters were real to me I know them I know them in here and I really love how Amy initially comes across as quite this like perfect girl like the perfect daughter sister best friend cousin etc etc but then i love how as you see she tries to bridge the gap between girlhood and womanhood and the complexities that accompany that and the challenges she ends up facing and wrong decisions she makes and seeing some of those flaws but how and how her character develops and learns it's just so realistic especially for that time period the first book i think sets the scene wonderfully for this series but the second book please do be aware that things definitely take a much darker turn there is a lot of emotional abuse there is physical abuse there is sexual abuse so there are definitely some content warnings if you want to continue this series and because you're so invested in the lives of these characters it, it hits differently like I've read quite a few reviews of people who are like I thought this book was wonderfully written I thought these characters were incredible but I hated the reading experience because you genuinely it invokes such real and raw emotions from within um it's kind of similar I guess to A Little Life not in terms of narrative or trauma porn or anything like that but in the sense that you just become so attached to these characters that feel so real and vivid to you anything that happens to them just hits and cuts deep and it was great seeing how the industrial revolution creeps in and sort of that just wider historical context in the background which seemed quite historically accurate seeing how there were changing attitudes you see when women get to vote for the first time just like town and rural life especially there were so many interesting things about farming life that i learned from this book that and I have a greater and better appreciation for. So if you enjoy any sort of historical fiction and particularly books where you feel like you're just a fly on the wall in the lives and the comings and goings of a family's life, then this is a book I would highly, highly recommend. And as I said, it's for free on Kindle, so check it out. So now we're going to go from New Zealand and we're going back to Europe and this time we're going to Eastern Europe to the Czech Republic and the book that I want to talk about is one of my all-time favourites and that is The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundera and it's translated from the Czech into English by Michael Henry Heim. And this is an intellectual love story. It's a novel that encompasses love, politics or in the setting of a communist Czechoslovakia as this novel is set during the 1968 Prague spring period. We follow two women, two men, a dog and all their lives, how they intertwine, how they separate. We follow Teresa who is in love with this surgeon, we follow the surgeon who feels conflicted by his love for Teresa but also his desire to pursue 
just sensual pleasures and hedonism to an extent and we follow one of his mistresses and how she lives her life in a series of betrayals and then we also follow the mistresses one of her lovers who stands to lose everything because of his noble qualities and despite the unlikable characters at the heart of this novel Kundera just manages to create something almost magical the way he skims different topics, different themes such as philosophy, political ideologies, love, the way he tackles love I find so fascinating, death, sex, betrayal, injustices and the human psyche, it's just wonderful and the way he explores it and he has these interjections of his philosophy it just creates this space where you as a reader get to interact with these ideas and you feel as though you get to actively participate in these discussions alongside the author i felt like an intellectual babe honestly i felt like i had big brain energy by the end of reading this book which i personally love and i really love how the concept of emotional weight and burden how they are explored and just the myriad of ways that people misinterpret each other and actions and their feelings and interactions and then especially the pursuit of sensual and sexual pleasures versus the idea and concept of fidelity and whether that's a concept that should apply to everyone or not that was a really really interesting deep dive that we got in this book too it's just a great reflection of human existence but in this Prague spring period communist landscape and if you just like commentary on politics, you like ramblings of philosophy, you like explorations of love and how love can be so different to different people and how it can be so all-encompassing in someone's life and you want to read a book that might make you reassess your own ideas on life, on love, on identity, on politics, then this might be the book for you. That's the last book that I'll be talking about in this video. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and if you want to join the small chaotic corner of the internet, then subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!